There is no shortage of war stories in science fiction. Real world conflicts are allegorized and translated into grandiose space operas where human bodies are broken and rebuilt or reshaped or turned into something else entirely. Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers, Joe Haldeman's The Forever War, John Stakely's Armor, and John Scalzi's Old Man's War all sit within this Venn diagram of speculative fiction. Each one takes a different philosophical stance on how war shapes and distorts personal identity. Whether they know it or not, these novels are actually in dialogue with each other, with each book providing a distinct lens through which to view the war story. Heinlein with his militaristic idealism, Haldeman with his anti-war disillusionment, Stakely with his existential dread, and Scalzi with his optimistic pragmatism. The protagonists of these books may all wear futuristic armor and battle scary interstellar threats, but their psychological journeys diverge in ways that reflect not only the historical context of each book, but also their author's varied philosophical commitments to authority, individual agency, and the nature of identity in times of war. Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers, which was first published in 1959, offers a militaristic view of identity, one where service in the armed forces functions as a rite of passage into full personhood. The protagonist, Johnny Rico, transforms from a callow youth into a hardened soldier, his sense of self becoming fully intertwined with military discipline and duty. In Heinlein's universe, personal identity is not intrinsic, but achieved through rigorous adherence to hierarchical authority and sacrifice for the collective good. Citizenship in this world is a reward for military service, implying that only those who serve are worthy of rights and recognition. Heinlein's militarism has sparked endless debates. Some argue that the book endorses fascism, while others defend it as a nuanced exploration of civic responsibility. Either way, Starship Troopers suggests that war, far from stripping away identity, provides a structure within which identity is forged. The uniform isn't a loss of individuality, but a symbol of purpose, an identity to aspire toward. Rico's transformation is complete when he no longer questions the system that shaped him. He becomes not just a soldier, but a believer, someone who derives his sense of self-worth from his place within the military hierarchy. Joe Haldeman's The Forever War, first published in 1974, was written as a reflection on the author's own experiences in Vietnam, and it presents a radically different view of war and identity, where Heinlein saw war as a way to achieve personal fulfillment, Haldeman portrays it as a force that fractures identity and alienates soldiers from both themselves and society. William Mandela, the book's central protagonist, returns from an interstellar conflict to find that the earth he once knew has become unrecognizable. Through relativistic time dilation, centuries pass on Earth while only a few years pass for him, making his reintegration totally impossible. War, for Mandela, is not a builder of identity. It's a thief that robs him of time, of relationships, and even the language of his native society. Mandela's experience reflects the disillusionment of soldiers who return home from war only to find that they no longer belong. 
unlike Johnny Rico, Mandela does not emerge from the war with a clear sense of self. Instead, he feels adrift, as if the very notion of personal identity has eroded over time. The Forever War presents a world where war doesn't just kill bodies, it kills continuity. It renders identity fragile and provisional. War isolates the soldier, not just from others, but from any stable sense of self. And this is a pretty poignant reflection of the alienation that many veterans experience in the aftermath of combat. John Stakely's Armor, first published in 1984, takes the metaphor of armor quite literally, using it to explore the psychological mechanisms soldiers adopt to survive trauma. The book's protagonist, Felix, wears a suit of powered armor that enables him to slaughter alien hordes, but it also becomes a barrier between his own humanity and the horrors of war. Felix's survival depends on the creation of a secondary identity, a relentless killing machine he refers to as the engine. This dissociative split between Felix's core self and his combat persona reflects the ways in which trauma forces individuals to compartmentalize their experiences. Stakely's novel suggests that war requires soldiers to shed their humanity, not just temporarily, but permanently. Felix never fully reclaims his original self after the war, his real identity becomes irrelevant. What matters is his ability to survive. Armor explores the idea that war transforms soldiers into expendable machines, stripping them of individuality and replacing it with the cold efficiency of violence, where starship troopers sees identity as something to be built through service Armor implies that the soldier's true self must be buried, sacrificed for the sake of survival. What emerges is not a coherent identity at all, but a shattered psyche haunted by the realization that the first casualty of war is the self. And finally... John Scalzi's Old Man's War, published in 2005, offers a far more playful and optimistic take on the relationship between war and identity, though it doesn't completely shy away from the psychological complexities involved. In Scalzi's universe, elderly humans are given new genetically enhanced bodies to fight in interstellar wars. John Perry, the book's protagonist, literally gets a new lease on life. His mind is transferred into a younger, stronger body designed specifically for combat. This rejuvenation allows Perry to grapple with questions of identity in ways that are both literal and metaphorical. Are we merely the bodies we inhabit? Can we still be ourselves when we become something fundamentally different. Unlike Stakely's Felix, who loses himself completely in the machinery of war, Perry retains his sense of humor and his moral compass, even as he struggles with the physical and emotional demands of combat. Scalzi's novel suggests that identity is not fixed at all, but adaptable, capable of surviving profound transformations. The process of becoming a soldier in Old Man's War involves change, but it doesn't require the obliteration of the self. Perry's story is one of integration. He learns to reconcile his new body and his new role as a soldier with his memories and his values from his former life intact. At the same time, Scalzi's work reflects a certain skepticism toward institutions of power. Perry's autonomy is constantly at risk, threatened by military bureaucracy and the demands of war. 
But ultimately, Old Man's War offers the hope that identity can be fluid without being lost, that even in the midst of war, it's possible to remain human. A key theme that emerges across these four novels is the tension between collective identity and individual selfhood. Starship Troopers champions the idea that personal identity is best revealed through service to the collective. In contrast, the Forever War presents the collective as a force of alienation, one that erodes the individual's sense of self. Armor goes a step further, suggesting that the collective doesn't just subsume the individual, it (laughs) annihilates it, leaving only survival mechanisms in its wake. Old Man's War, however, offers a more nuanced view, positing that individual identity can survive within the collective as long as it remains adaptable. This tension reflects the author's differing philosophical and historical contexts, right? Heinlein wrote in the shadow of World War II when the notion of collective sacrifice was celebrated. Haldeman, by contrast, was struggling with the disillusionment of the Vietnam War where soldiers returned home to find themselves alienated from the society they'd fought for. Stakely's novel, with its focus on psychological trauma, anticipates the more recent discourse around PTSD in the 80s and the difficulty of reintegration. And then Scalzi, writing in the post-9-11 era, reflects a world where personal identity is in flux, constantly negotiated between physical realities and virtual possibilities. Taken together, these four novels reveal the many ways that war reshapes, fragments, and redefines identity. Heinlein's Rico finds himself through military service, his identity forged in the fires of duty. Haldeman's Mandela, on the other hand, loses himself in the endless churn of war, his sense of self eroded by time and isolation. Stakely's Felix discovers that survival comes at the cost of identity, while Scalzi's Perry learns that identity can survive transformation, but only if it's willing to roll with the changes. War in these stories functions not just as a backdrop, but as a crucible for identity. It demands that individuals confront the boundaries of selfhood and decide what can be sacrificed, and what must be preserved at all costs. Whether war ultimately builds or destroys identity remains an open question, one that each of these novels answers in a completely different way. The answer, it seems, depends not only on the nature of the war, but on the nature of the individual who fights it. In the end, these books suggest that identity is both a weapon and a shield. For some, like Rico, it's something to be sharpened through discipline and service. For others, like Mandela and Felix, it's a fragile thing, easily shattered by violence. And for those like Perry, it's a constant work in progress, a reminder that even in the darkest moments, The self is never entirely lost. It can always be found again, though perhaps in a new, unexpected form. Thank you for watching.